Hey there, everybody. My name is Belle Lou Allen. Um, some of you might know me. I did graduate from Lawrence County High School back in 2016. However, that's like kind of a long time ago, I know, so I might be a little bit too old, maybe a little too washed up for some of you to recognize me. Um, regardless, I am a Lawrence County High School Red Devil. Um, and after I graduated from LCHS, I attended the University of Alabama, where I graduated with a Bachelor's of Science in Psychology and I graduated back in May of 2020. I'm currently a Master's of Public Health candidate here at the University of Alabama, and I will graduate with that degree in May of 2021 before attending medical school in July of 2021. So, Master's of Public Health, or MPH, what is that? I know I had never heard of that when I was in high school. So, Master's of Public Health will allow me to be a health professional that makes decisions for the good of everyone for everyone's health so these are decisions such as it's a good idea to wear a mask when we're in a pandemic or the decision to put the jewel pod warnings on snapchat or to put the syphilis is on the rise billboards all over north alabama so just big time decisions like that now in order to complete my master's of public health i have to write what we call a thesis which is basically just a really really long paper and in order to complete my thesis i have to complete a type of community involvement project. And for my community involvement project, I really wanted to get back to my hometown and give back in a way um, and get involved with my high school. So that is why I'm here today. I do wish I could be there in person and um, actually meet you all and really get to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. But unfortunately, COVID-19 is making that really hard for us. However, I do hope this video will be informative. I hope it'll be educational. I hope it'll be interesting. I hope you learn something and you leave today um, a little more prepared to take an active role in your own healthcare. So that being said, I'm gonna try to go ahead and share my screen. I have a PowerPoint to show you all. And let me get that up. Okay, so I'm going to present this. All right, so today we're going to be talking about an epidemic. Now don't roll your eyes at me. I know you're thinking COVID-19, but I'm not here to talk about COVID-19. I'm here to talk about a different epidemic and an epidemic that affected roughly 20 million people last year, but you probably did not hear very much about them. So first off, what is an epidemic? An epidemic is a widespread occurrence of an infectious disease in a community at a particular time. So this differs from a pandemic like COVID-19. An epidemic does not cross national borders. A pandemic does. So a pandemic is going to be all over the world, whereas an epidemic will be um, situated within one country or one state or even one city. So at the time that I'm recording this, there have been 29 million cases of COVID-19 reported in the United States in the past year. However, also in the past year, and pretty much every year before that as well, there are roughly 20 million STI cases reported in the United States. So what are STIs? This is gonna be the main thing we're gonna talk about, but we are gonna talk about quite a few things. You see here, we have a little roadmap. We're gonna look at what are STIs? How do you get an STI? What are the risk factors for them? How are they treated? What do you do once you have one? And lastly, how in the world do you even know if you have one? So what is testing going to look like? First off, what is an STI? An STI is a sexually transmitted infection, but we refer to them as STIs. A little easier, a little shorter to say. These previously were called sexually transmitted diseases or STDs. So that is probably the word that you are more familiar with. But the scientific community has just moved a little more towards STI in the past few years. So these are infections that are typically transmitted through bodily fluids or direct skin-to-skin -skin contact during all types of intercourse. So yes, all types of intercourse. You can contract an STI through vaginal, oral, or anal sexual intercourse. STIs can be three types, bacterial, viral, or parasitic. So let's just break that down a little bit. First off, bacterial infection. This is when a foreign body enters your body and just wreaks all kinds of havoc for your immune system. So some examples of this are strep throat. I'm sure we have all had a bad case of strep throat and missed a couple of days of school. That is a bacterial infection. Some examples of bacterial STIs are syphilis, gonorrhea, and chlamydia. Next, 
we have viral STIs. So a viral infection is when a microorganism enters your body and begins using your machinery to reproduce and continue its life cycle. Some examples of this, COVID-19, of course, that is a virus. The flu, just the common flu, the common cold, and chickenpox, these are all examples of viruses. Some examples of viral STIs are human papillomavirus, or HPV, human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, and genital warts. And lastly, STIs can be parasitic. So parasites are these tiny little bitty living organisms that are going to enter your body, and they're going to use you as a host to grow. So these are things like malaria, scabies, giardia, and then in the STI realm, um, a very commonly diagnosed um, parasitic STI is trichomoniasis. So why am I even telling you this, right? You know, I am very interested in infections. I want to be a doctor, but I recognize that everyone is not. And you might think this is the most boring thing you've ever heard in your life, but y'all, it is imperative that you know this information. So in the United States, adolescents, so you guys watching right now, make up about one fourth of the population. However, every year adolescents make up half of all new STI cases. So that means that your age group is being disproportionately affected by this epidemic. Now, if you look at this map I'll have right here, um, this is a map of STIs per 100,000 in the population. And as you can see, the lighter colors are the areas with less STIs and the darker colors are the areas with more. So yep, you see right there, the great state of Alabama and kind of the rest of the Southeast is a hot spot for sexually transmitted infections. So not only is your age group most highly affected, your regional category is also most highly affected. And like many infections, STIs can have serious complications if they are left untreated. So more risk factors, more bad news for y'all. So women, all my ladies in the, in the room right now, I have some bad news. Women, and particularly adolescent women, are more likely to contract an STI and more likely to have serious complications than their male counterparts. Now, there are quite a few reasons for this. First off, ladies, your cervix is lined with cells that are just a hot spot for infections. The surface area of your cervix is much larger than that of the male's genitalia, so it's a lot easier um, to contract an infection. Your cervix also produces low amounts of mucus. It will, this will um, improve in the future, but right now your um, cervical mucus production is very low. And um, that also contributes to your, your risk um, of contracting an STI. So lastly, this applies to everybody, but the adolescent brain is just not where it will be when you're a fully functioning grown adult. So as an adolescent, your frontal lobe, so this part of your brain right here, is not completely developed. It will not be completely developed until you're on into your mid-20s. So that means that your critical decision-making skills, there's not there yet. And so I don't know about y'all, but I know when I was 14, 15, 16, I could make a decision and then a couple hours later or a couple days later, I would be thinking, oh my god why did i do that that was so flipping stupid so if you've ever been in that situation blame your frontal lobe things will get better i promise but this does make you vulnerable right now and you are especially vulnerable to making risky sexual decisions that can lead to stis so that's just something that you have to be aware of now complications if i have not scared you enough. This is going to be probably the worst part of the presentation, but it's the truth, y'all. You deserve to know the truth. You are almost all adults, and I know that you are capable of adult-like rational thinking right now. So we're going to talk about some complications. Like I said, if you were diagnosed with a sexually transmitted infection and you leave it untreated, these are just some examples of the things that can happen to you. Now, I could not possibly list out every single STI with every single complication here, or we'd be sitting here until next Tuesday. So I chose three of the most commonly diagnosed, and I'm going to go through some of the major complications of them. First off, we have chlamydia. So if you are diagnosed with chlamydia and you leave it untreated for a long period of time, it could result in infertility or the inability to have children for my ladies. It could also result in ectopic pregnancy. 
So this is where a, this is where you will um, essentially become pregnant, but an egg will attach itself to your fallopian tube instead of in your uterus. It should normally implant in the uterus, but in an ectopic pregnancy, it implants itself at the wrong site. So these are not viable pregnancies. You will unfortunately lose this fetus uh, and it can result in infertility afterwards. It's a very, very dangerous situation for women. Chlamydia can also result in pelvic inflammatory disease, which is a very painful disease that can also lead to, to infertility problems. Next, we have syphilis. Syphilis can result in some very severe complications. So these include things like blindness. You can literally go blind if you are not treated for syphilis. You can go deaf. You can develop premature dementia. My ladies, you can be left infertile. This can lead to something we call central nervous system depression, where this attacks your central nervous system and you can be left paralyzed from syphilis. It can, the same way central nervous system depression, it can make it difficult for you to even breathe and syphilis can ultimately result in death. And lastly, we have human papillomavirus or HPV. HPV can result in genital warts and is the one of the most common causes of cervical cancer in women. So I don't say all this to scare you. I'm not here to scare you and to make you feel fearful or feel bad. I'm just here to tell you the truth. And this is the truth. However, this is, these complications I just mentioned will not happen the day after you contract an STI. They won't happen the month after. They won't even happen within the first year because odds are most STIs are gonna go unnoticed for a very long time. Your nose isn't gonna turn purple, your ears aren't gonna fall off, and you're not gonna get a big scarlet letter A on your chest. On the outside, you will look completely normal, and these things will be festering and, and infecting your body um, over time. However, I do wanna point out some symptoms, some early warning signs of STI, so it's very important that you learn these. But I do want to add a little disclaimer here. These are not the only symptoms of STIs. The, you know, there are millions, or not millions, there's a lot of things that could be a symptom of a sexually transmitted infection. I also want to mention that just because you have one of these symptoms, that does not mean you definitely have a sexually transmitted infection. These are just some common symptoms that people have during the early stages of STI. So it's very important that we know these and that we can recognize these. And if we see this happening to us, we can get to a doctor in order to get things checked out and to get things treated. So the first symptom I wanna point out to you is discharge. So this is an unexplained liquid in your underwear. It can be many different textures, um, it can be um, slimy, it can have a cottage cheese-like texture, um, it can be anything that is abnormal feeling. It can also have many different odors. So anything that smells pungent or very strong um, does warrant some medical attention. And lastly, this discharge can have many different colors. So it can be white, it can be a yellowish, it can have a brown tint to it. Anything that's not just a clear water-like liquid um, could be considered a discharge and might be um, something that could warrant a trip to your pediatrician or your primary care provider. Next, I wanna point out burning. So if you feel a burning sensation during urination or intercourse, this is also something you might want to discuss with your doctor. And finally, any new or unexplained sore or canker or pustule in your genital area is always something you should share with your doctor. That's not, none of these things are things you should just keep to yourself and hope it gets better. Um, you have the resources to reach out and so you should reach out and, um, if you're wrong, great news, but you know, at least you took a stand in your own healthcare and you, um, you were proactive in your decision making. So what can you do? I know you're all sitting there shaking in your boots. I've scared you, just scared the poo out of you. Um, so what can you do? So luckily for you, most STIs are easily treatable and easily preventable. So first, we can just prevent the darn things before they ever happen. So some ways we can prevent them are to always wear a barrier method prevention during all types of intercourse. I mean, during vaginal, anal, and oral intercourse. So an STI, y'all, it, it, there's this misconception that you can see it on someone when they have one, that you know who has an STI, that you know that, oh, they were raised from a good family, they come from a good background. Y'all, you don't know. 
STIs do not discriminate. Anyone can have one. So it's important that you protect yourself. So some types of barrier method prevention you can use, condoms, dental dams, and latex gloves. These are all good options for all those different types of intercourse that I mentioned. And secondly, we can also get ourselves tested. So many STIs can be treated with a simple round of antibiotics from the pharmacy. But there's no way to know that you need these antibiotics unless you get tested. So STI testing. This is a very simple process. All that's gonna happen is your healthcare provider can swab your genitals, can swab your cheek, or can take a urine sample, send it to a lab for analysis, and get you those results back within a matter of days. So your pediatrician and your primary care provider likely has the resources to perform this testing, but you must ask for it. So this isn't typically a process that is done just on an everyday checkup, but you can ask your doctor to do this and they can do it for you and send it off for analysis. This also is frequently done with an OBGYN. So if you ladies, if you are visiting an OBGYN, you can ask them for this testing as well and they can perform that for you. So this testing is easy. It is affordable and it can help you prevent those awful complications that I mentioned earlier. Now, if you do not have a pediatrician or you don't have a primary care provider that you see frequently, no need to worry because we do have local testing options right here in Lawrence County. So I have some of these written down here. First is Lawrence County Health Department. So you can visit Lawrence County Health Department and receive free HIV testing and $15 syphilis, gonorrhea, and chlamydia testing. So that's very affordable um, and it is an easy process there. Also in family health care in Town Creek, so if you live closer to the Town Creek community, they do offer low cost testing for chlamydia, syphilis, gonorrhea, and HIV. These are done on a sliding scale. So that means that they will work with you so that you only pay for what you can afford. However, you must have an adult accompany you to family health care of Town Creek if you are a minor. Next, there's a clinic in Florence called Thrive, Alabama. They offer free HIV testing Monday through Thursday from 9 to 4, and on Fridays from 9 to noon. They also can test for a variety of different STIs, including chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, herpes, and vaginitis by appointment. So please, y'all, make an appointment before you drive all the way to Florence for any of these STI testings. So Thrive Alabama is committed to working with you on these payment options. They will work with what you have in order to ensure that you can be tested. And I also want to mention that all of the surrounding county health departments do offer similar services as Lawrence County. So whether it be Morgan, Colbert, Limestone, Lauderdale, Winston, Franklin, Coleman, whichever is closest to you, these health departments are going to have similar options as Lawrence County, typically free HIV testing around about $15 for the other STI testing. It doesn't matter if you are a citizen of Lawrence County, you can visit any health department in any county in order to become tested. So I have all of these options for you. I know that's a lot of information. You will not be able to remember that after it is over. So you do have a small business card in the packet you have received that has all of this information as well as some contact information for each of these places. So please keep up with that. If you keep up with anything in that packet I provided for you, slip that in your wallet, put it in the back of your phone case, put it in your purse. Just keep up with that. It can really come in handy in the future. So in conclusion, we discussed the seriousness of STIs. You learned a lot today. You learned about the risk factors. You learned about the negative consequences, especially for young women. And you learned about treatment options, prevention options, and all about STI screening. So you learned some important statistics as well. We know that adolescents are at the highest risk for contracting a sexually transmitted infection. But we also now know that treatment is easy and it's affordable and it's near you. However, you must get tested before you know you need this treatment. So this really is a very adult decision to have to make, but you can make it. I know, you know, I remember what it is like to be a teenager and I, I also know that you are a lot more capable and a lot more resourceful um, and a lot more mature than people often give you credit for. So I certainly believe that you have the resources, you have the knowledge, and you have the power to make smart and helpful decisions for yourself. And I hope that today this just showed you another way that you can really take an active role in your own healthcare. 
So you were given a packet. Uh, it should have first off just an STI overview. So that is a great resource. It hits all the high points I mentioned today. So you can go back, kind of jog your memory. You also received an STI frequently asked question sheet. So in that sheet, I kind of debunked some common myths regarding STIs and maybe um, added just some additional um, valuable information about STIs. You also received a further resources sheet. So this is for anyone who found today's presentation interesting, if you're interested in sexual health or really just science and medicine at all. Um, there's some cool resources there. And I tried to center those more towards things that would be appealing to you. So there's some movies, some books, podcasts, YouTube channels, things that are interesting and that kind of um, fun to learn about. I also included a business card, like I just mentioned, with all of the local testing options and some contact information. And then there is a short quiz on what we covered today. However, don't worry about it. It's only 10 questions long. Everything on that quiz was either mentioned in today's presentation or is explicitly written on those sheets in that packet. So little hint there, your teachers might not have wanted me to told you that, but y'all can do great on it. You can all make a 100, I know. And lastly, I just want to leave you all with my contact information. Please, please, please reach out to me if you have any questions about STIs or sexual health, or um, if you have any comments about today's presentation, you want to learn more. Even if you just want to learn more about the University of Alabama and the MPH program, I would love to talk about that as well. Here is my phone number, and here is also my UA email address. I do work during the day, so I might not answer a phone call, but I will always answer a text message or an email. So text or email are definitely the best ways to contact me. Um, but if you call me after work hours, I will probably be able to answer that as well. So thank you for your time today. I really do appreciate it. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this. I know I have enjoyed preparing for this and um, I'm looking very forward to hearing from all of you. So thank you very much. All right. Bye y'all.